1997, which of the following molecules and ions contain polar bonds, and which of these molecules and ions have a dipole moment? And then we have selenium tetrafluoride, SEF4. Does this contain polar bonds? Does this have a dipole moment? I don't know. But we can start off by saying, do we see any bonds here? Not that I see, I just see SEF4. So, with these types of questions, especially if they're asking for polarity, nonpolar, polar stuff, take a second and draw the Lewis structure. It is one extra step, but I promise you by looking at, you know, the actual molecule, it will help you get your answers for polar bonds and dipole moments. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now there's tons of videos on the chapter, on the chapter, there's tons of videos on the channel. Um, in which we take it step by step, learning how to draw Lua structures. So you could always go and check those out. This one will kind of be like a quick inversion. You could pause the video and see if your Lua structure matches mine. Now for SEF4, I have selenium in the middle because fluorine, if it's a central atom, it's never going to be a central atom because fluorine is the most electronegative element. So those four fluorines have to be surrounding the selenium. Uh, each fluorine should have a single bond. And then each fluorine should have the six electrons around it to get that octet. And then as I draw these, when I'm done, I'm going to work on selenium. Selenium is, let's see where selenium, selenium is in oxygen's group. So that's group 6A, 16. It's got six valence electrons. I only see four here for the one side of the um, the bond. So I just need to add one more pair and that's it. Okay. Now, since we drew the Lewis structure, we can clearly see the bonds. There are four single bonds and they're all equivalent because they're all a fluorine connecting to that central selenium. So it doesn't really matter what bond we're looking at. And when you're looking for polar or nonpolar bonds, you're always just taking one of the bonds. So I guess they're all the same, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to pull out just a fluorine that's bound to the selenium. Now, if you want to find out your polar bond, your electronegativity difference between the two atoms, and remember a difference is just a fancy way for saying subtraction. So you're going to subtract those electronegativity values and if you are in the realm of 0.4 to 1.8, you have polar bonds. So I just quickly go to my electronegativity chart. Uh, fluorine's electronegativity is 4.0. So I'll do that here, 4.0. And selenium is 2.4. Just know that when you are taking these, the difference between them, always take the higher number minus the lower number because electronegativity difference can never be negative. So if you do get a negative, just take the absolute value. So when we do subtract 4.0 minus 2.4, uh, I think we get a 1.6. And it just makes it. It's still in the realm of being a polar bond. Um, we're all the way at the tail end. And just know that if you go beyond 1.8, you are an ionic bond. So in this case though, we're just right there. So this is a polar bond. So this molecule contains polar bonds. Now, as I'm coloring, let's talk about the dipole moment. Now, dipole moment is only seen in polar molecules. So instead of looking at the uh, individual bonds, now we have to look at the whole molecule as a, as a whole. And a dipole moment just basically means that you have unequal sharing somewhere of electrons in this molecule. And that's where the polarity comes from. Now, this is where the acronym SNAP comes in, S-N-A-P. We're zoning in on the polar side because that's what has the dipole moments. And a polar molecule is always asymmetrical, meaning that you should see differences along the molecule. But some of you might say, well, wait a minute, I have four fluorines, right? Would that be polar? That looks symmetrical to me. But there's a lone pair and there's a little good little trick to know. 
that if your central atom, whoever that is, if your central atom has the dots, at least one of them, it is automatically going to be polar, no exceptions. So our central atom, which is selenium, it does have two electrons. It does have a lone pair. So right off the bat, you know that this is a polar molecule. And because it's a polar molecule, polar molecules have that dipole moment. That means that there's an unequal sharing somewhere of the electrons um, in the structure. And it can be seen with the lone pairs. This bond to fluorine going to the left cancels out with this bond to fluorine going to the right. This fluorine bond up top cancels out with this fluorine bond going on the bottom. Nothing's canceling out the two electrons. So there you go. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel and I look forward to helping you with more questions. We love chemistry. We love physics and math videos or we have those but we love those subjects and we want to help you guys out. Check the channel out. I hope you're doing well out there and thank you for being here. You guys rock. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.